Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tinnitus TV. Today, I am talking to Greg Norton. Clearly, this is a man who loves a power trio, and with good reason. He's been in a couple of great ones. First and foremost, of course, Norton was the bassist in the legendary Minneapolis outfit Husker Du, who redefined punk in the 80s with the supersonic sound of albums like Zen Arcade and New Day Rising. If you miss them, well, here's some good news. Norton's new power trio, Ultra Bomb, co-starring guitarist Finney McConnell of the Mahones and drummer Jamie Oliver of UK Subs, just released an album called Time to Burn that recalls the blazing intensity of Norton's old band. Even more impressive, they wrote and recorded the whole thing in less than a week. While getting ready to head back out on the road with Ultra Bomb, Norton zoomed in from his Minnesota home to talk about working on the fly, a recent health crisis, his culinary preferences, having the greatest mustache in rock, and plenty more. Enjoy. How are you today, Greg Norton? Uh, I'm good. Uh, kind of a busy, busier morning than I anticipated. Uh, I had to finalize all of our Ultra Bomb merch for the for the big tour coming up. Uh, got that all all set up and ordered, and um, very excited about about getting out on the road with the band and um, unleashing Ultra Bomb on the world. Well, it, it is about time. Um, obviously, this one's been hanging around for a bit, and we'll, we'll get into some of the reasons for the, the delay. But uh, let's just start with uh, how do you guys feel about being called a punk supergroup? <laughs> it's kind of crazy. International punk supergroup. So there you go. Uh, you know, it's uh, that uh, we all have uh, rich histories in, in, um, in punk and uh, people want to refer to us as the super group, but I guess that I'm okay with that. You, you've been called worse things. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, obviously, it's Finney uh, from, from the Mahones, uh, Canada's own, and, and Jamie Oliver from UK Subs, and who did some time in SNFU. Uh, you guys seem like kind of an odd thruple. How did you all end up in a band together? It's it's the uh, the magic of the internet, you know. It's uh, uh, Finney and I had been Facebook friends since probably 20, 2015, 2016, something like that. Then, uh, uh, you know, he would message back and forth. Um, and a couple of years ago, I had been playing with a, a Minneapolis trio called Porcupine uh things didn't quite work out so uh i wasn't in a band and finney just out of the blue is like messages and he's like hey i've got this idea we should we should put together a band with the greatest punk drummer in the world jamie oliver and um uh, and i'm like yeah why not you know and, it, and originally we were thinking like we would just get together and uh you know, maybe play Husker, a mix of Husker, Mahones, and, and UK subs uh, songs. And everything came together really quick. Uh, Jamie was on board right away. Uh, we, you know, picked a name right away. We had the album artwork right away. Uh, and in uh, September of that year, Benny was going to be in Berlin. Uh, he was on a solo tour. Uh, Jamie just happened to be in Berlin at the same time, and Finney had some studio time booked. And I thought, you know, I should probably try to get to Berlin and, uh, you know, meet up with these guys. And, and uh, uh, so I booked a flight, flew to Berlin, met Jamie officially for the first time when he picked me up at the airport. Uh, the next morning at the studio, uh, Finney showed up. And it was the first time I'd actually met Finney face to face. And uh, Finney had all these great riffs that he had written for Ultra Bomb. And so we would start kind of going through some riffs and uh, we'd, we'd find one that we liked and we would hammer out an arrangement and play it a couple of times and then have uh, Hansi, the, uh, the studio engineer, uh, record it. And uh, as long as Jamie was happy with the drum, take we'd move on to the next one we wrote 
four songs the first day. We wrote the following six songs the next day. Um, the uh, the third day in the studio, Jamie was out uh, on a gig, and uh, that was. Uh, it was on that Saturday. At, at, I'm like, yeah, well, I've got all these lyrics. And so Finney's like looking at my lyrics and he's like, I've got the whole record figured out. And the first time that he had, he had seen my lyrics. And then on Sunday morning, we went in on the fourth day, Jamie's back in the studio with us. Finney sings the whole record. You know, we did, we did some on, on the fly editing um, of lyrics to, to make some things fit. But he nailed it, and and we're like, holy crap! We we just recorded a punk masterpiece in four days, and uh, and then at the very end of the day, we we had a little bit of time, so we recorded uh, Sonic Reducer. Sonic Reducer. <laughs> wow! Did you guys ever even bother learning any of the songs from your old bands? Uh, you know, we we actually we did when we. Uh, so to date, we have played one show officially, and that was at. Uh, uh, in Minneapolis at the Hook and Ladder Theater for a summer festival that they that they do, and we we headlined and we um, we played a few Husker songs, we played uh, a couple of Mahone's songs. Uh, we we didn't get around to doing any UK subs material for that show, uh, but the the plan is while we're out on the road, there'll there'll be a mix of uh, of Husker songs thrown in there, some Mahone's, uh, maybe some subs, and. Um, uh, but it, it'll be mostly, you know, the original Ultra Bomb, you know, uh, we'll play the entire record. And we're hoping to actually start cranking out on uh, new material here, too, on while we're out all together. That is, I mean, that is just crazy. Have you ever had an album come together that fast and that successfully before? Uh, not one that we actually wrote on the spot <laughs> yeah that's what i mean from from you start know, to finish it's like uh, it's, it's like, a, like you went on a blind date and got married and uh, you know right yeah it's yeah it, you know uh, uh it's like i answered a classified you know it's like punk rock <laughs> bass player wanted um must be able to write lyrics <laughs> or something so <laughs> so i wrote all of the lyrics for this record wow and it's funny because you know when i when i wrote these lyrics, yeah, I mean, I sort of had, you know, some sort of tune in my head um, as as the words flowed out, but how perfectly Finney made them fit to the to the songs that we created just blows me away. So, yeah, four days, uh, you know, literally two days to write it, and then a you know a third day to put the vocals down on it. It's incredible. You know, it's like Zen Arcade came together really fast in the studio, but, you know, we were, uh, you know, back then, Husker, we were always touring the record that we were about to record, uh, as opposed to the record that just came out. So when we got to the studio, we, you know, we already knew the material and, and um, so that's why we were able to, to work in uh, such an economy of time. Um, Right, but no, this Ultra Bomb record blows me away. It's so good. I yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I loved it the first time I heard it, and I love it even more now, knowing the backstory. That's just that's just ridiculous. Um, I do have to say, I'm uh, the the thing that one of the things that struck uh, stuck out uh, to me was that you know, despite your obviously varied backgrounds. To me, this album sounds like it could have been made in Minneapolis in in the, the late mid to late '80s. It seems they kind of gravitated more towards you than you gravitating towards them. Um, was that just you guys plugged in and that's what came out, or was this a kind of a conscious decision at some point of here's what we're aiming for? No, that was uh, uh, we plugged in and that's what came out. Wow. Um, you know, I mean, I. I play bass the way I play bass. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Finney had, had some, uh, yeah, I mean, he's been a huge Husker fan ever since the first time he, he, uh, got turned on to the band when he was like 19. Hmm. So maybe Finney was channeling some of that. Um, Jamie's just a, an amazing drummer. It's, it, he can, it, it's, um, like I said, it, it blew me away how quick this all came together. And it's it does have a bit of a nostalgic feel to it, but it's also at the same time, it's it's fresh. 
you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's relevant. It's, you know, it's not like we're, we're just, uh, you know, mining nuggets from our past. We, we made something for now. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. It's it, it it definitely will appeal to people who have loved your previous work. But yeah, it's it's fantastic and and current. Um, what is it with you and power trios? It's always a power trio. <laughs> uh, it just seems to work out that way. It's um, uh, the only the only band I've ever played with that's not a power trio is is the uh, the jazz. Uh, you know, avant fusion band gang font that I'm that I'm in, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and and hopefully uh, we'll we'll see some uh, some more gang font here in the near future. But uh, power trios are it's where it's at, you know. And plus, <laughs> uh, it's easier to get three guys in a van with all your gear than four guys in a van with all your gear. Fair enough. So so um, you guys obviously did this a couple of years ago. And then it was, it came out originally uh, about this time last year. And I'm, uh, you know, you were all ready to go out and promote it. And then obviously you were diagnosed with, with prostate cancer. So that put a whole kibosh on that. Right. Uh, so how, how are you doing now? You've been through treatment and everything. So I, I had surgery and they removed the prostate. Uh, all of the cancer was contained to the prostate and and as they say all of my margins were clean so uh i should be good to go for a long time uh you know i i, I guess once you have cancer there there is a, a higher likelihood that you could get a second cancer sure. uh but as far as the prostate cancer goes i i should be in the clear yeah and it's so been I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good and i'm healthy i'm um, getting ready to get back out there and jump around on the stage. You're not still driving the van, are you? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be some driving involved. Yep. So we're, <laughs> we're this upcoming tour starts in, um, uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, um, uh, area at the turf club on May 11th. And we'll, uh, we've got 18 shows over the following 21 days, uh, going all the way down the Mississippi River to New Orleans over through Texas at the Southwest uh, to get to the coast and then punk rock bowling in Vegas. Yes. Uh, and one show on the way home to Minneapolis in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so I think we're going to probably put close to 5,000 miles yeah. on, on this tour. So it's crazy. This is your first tour in, in how long? Uh, well, first big tour like this, probably since Husker broke up, uh, you know, wow. Porcupine, we, we got out and did some uh, support uh, runs. Uh, like we were out on the road for 10 days with the, uh, the flesh eaters. Uh, we did, uh, uh, you know, a handful of shows with uh, Mud Honey. We did, we did uh, a few shows with Flipper out on the road, but this will be the longest that I've been out on the road since Husker. Cool. And, and I'm guessing that given, you know, what you've been through with your health, it's got to be even more special. It is, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it's don't take anything for granted. You know, it's uh, get out there and, and, and uh, live the experience and, and um, you know, make those memories. Yeah. Uh, uh, despite the fact that two of at least two of the three uh, guys in your band have some pretty strong connections to Canada, I, I see a complete dearth of Canadian shows on your tour list there. Uh, we will be working that out and hopefully uh, uh, next year that that will that will definitely change. So our plans for the rest of this year after this tour were, um, uh, most likely we'll do a, a run of shows through Europe and uh, England, Scotland, and Ireland this fall. Uh, that's when we're planning on getting into the studio and uh, recording the next record. Uh, we, we've talked about possibly going back to the studio in Berlin uh, to, to do the next record uh, there. It was just a, a, a great spot and a, and a nice little studio. And, and, um, and actually, Hansi, the... Uh, he owns the place. He's the engineer, and and he was like, "Wait, are you telling me that you just wrote that song?" And we're like, "Yeah, we 
<laughs> you just watched us write this whole record. He's like, there's no way. There's no way that you just wrote that. So uh, no, it's um, incredible. I mean, I, I think you guys did you guys have to like go back and learn the songs because it's been a couple of years since you, you know, just put them out on the fly like that. Yeah, you know, all of all three of us have been keeping up as far as uh making sure we don't forget how to play. So um <laughs> uh, uh it'll it'll be fun here in a couple of weeks. Jamie will be um coming into Minnesota first and uh, he and I will have an opportunity to, to go through the stuff. Uh, Finney will show up about a week before um, the show. So we'll, we'll have ample time to, to rehearse mm -hmm. and make sure we're ready and uh, you know have all the other supplemental uh, tunes ready to go as well. And um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's one of those things with the internet, you can actually still, you know, stay close in touch and and make sure everybody is is on the same page and all that so yeah have you already started writing for the second album or are you going to do it the same way and just go in and, and do it on the fly uh i we're probably going to start working on, on material while we're on this tour you know okay. uh, and uh you know i haven't stopped writing lyrics and finney finney hasn't stopped writing riffs so uh you know we'll, we'll still probably put it together the same way Will it have the same spark, the same sense of danger? <laughs> I, I, I certainly hope so. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think that we're, we're headed for a sophomore slump, but uh, um, I, I think this next record actually could, could possibly even turn out better than the first one, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, you know, now you kind of uh, have a little more rapport with each other musically, right? So there's different things you can do with it and learning about you know, what each other can do to add to the song. So it seems like, yes, you could even improve upon uh, the the amazing thing you just, you know, did first time, so. Yeah, it's a, it, it's an opportunity to, for us to kind of hone in on, on, you know, what the Ultra Bomb sound is, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I want to ask you about uh, uh, tonight Longhorn, which just came out for, for Record Store Day. Um, yeah. Was now, I mean, that was on your own label, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we, uh, Reflex Records, that was yeah. that's our Husker News label. Uh, you know, we put our first, um, uh, first single out on, on that, and then, uh, we put uh, Everything Falls Apart out on Reflex, right? And back in the 80s, we recorded a lot of, hey, there we go, great album. Uh, we <laughs> recorded a lot of, uh, great local Minneapolis bands like uh, Man Size Action and Rifle Sport and Otto's Chemical Lounge. Uh, we put out Articles of Faith from Chicago. And so with this release, we're, we're kind of reestablishing Reflex. And um, it won't be the last thing that you see on Reflex. Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just see. I don't, we don't really have a timeline as far as like how quick we will get some things going but we you know we've talked about like you know it'd be nice to get uh those older records by our our you know um the bands that we put out get those records back out there and uh the uh the record store i, I did two in stores on saturday i was i spent a total of about six hours between two stores and both stores were crazy busy um I think uh, both locations uh, sold out of um, the record that day. Uh, they each had a hundred on hand. And I think the record turned out fantastic for considering we're talking 19, you know, a cassette tape from 1979 and cassette tapes from 1980. Uh, it just sounds so good and cleaned up so well. And the whole package is great. Um, we, we also have t-shirts now too for with uh, that same cover art on it. Beautiful. I mean, it must be nice to, you know, after all these years and obviously, you know, you had your ups and downs and strained relationships uh, during and after and all that, but it must just be fabulous at this point in your life to, to, to know how much people uh, still love and appreciate and, you know, have not forgotten about, about the band. I think the band's popularity is greater today than it was when we, um, um, in 19, 
eighty, you know, January of nineteen eighty eight when when the band officially broke up. So, yeah. uh, and that's the power of the internet. Again, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's there's a guy in Boston that runs the Husker Du database that that I think he he did a great job of of help pushing the word out. And you know, obviously Bob is is still. Um, writing and, and recording and touring at, at a high level. And, and, um, and, and also in that span, you've, you've had all these other bands uh, like Green Day and Foo Fighters and Pixies and uh, coming out and saying like, yeah, Husker Du was a big influence on us. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to meet Flea uh, after Red Hot Chili Peppers show as he was actually getting on, on his, uh, on their bus to leave. And he just was like, I just want to tell you that Zen Arcade changed my life. There you go. So, you know, it's, it's, it's great. You know, Dave Grohl has said, you know, it's simple. No, who's going do no, no Foo Fighters. So Zen Arcade. Uh, <laughs> there we go. that's a great album. I just recently listened. That's a great album. Yeah. Through the whole thing uh, from, you know, Put it on listen to it from beginning to end and um i, I think it sounds better to today than it did when we recorded it what can i say so <laughs> oh well, yeah, you're not wrong i mean obviously grant's gone but i'm sure you are constantly asked by people about about doing something with bob again uh, would you even want to i mean because it seems like while it's obviously something fans would would go crazy over it's also something that I think would not be the same. And, you know, can you reunite and capture that same magic again, you know? Right. Well, it definitely wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I would, I would happily get up on, on stage with Bob to, to play something. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, it, it's kind of up to him. Uh, Porcupine actually opened up for the Bob Mold Band at the Palace Theater in St. Paul uh, on what would have been the 40th, or actually what was the 40th anniversary of the very first Husker Du show. Right. And, um, you know, and, and I, I, I put it to him, I'm like, you know, look, a lot of people are asking and I'm wondering as well um, if the two of us would be on stage together and, I suggested that if we do that, I think the song to play would have been eight miles high. Mm. Uh, and <laughs> exactly that one right there, uh, which which uh, gets voted on on lots of polls for greatest cover ever. Yeah. Uh, and it's and the B side I, recorded here in Winnipeg. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, your audio has dropped out. Oh, my. There you go. Dropped. There you go. Okay. You're back. Uh, you know, Bob said it just wouldn't feel right without Grant. And yeah. that's true. It wouldn't. Um, no, and that's a fair, know, that's I, a totally I, fair I, assessment. What's that? That's a totally fair assessment, you know? Oh, absolutely. I agree. Uh, you know, but I think there there is still an opportunity there. I think fans would still absolutely love it. You know, that would be something that if it happens, we would be doing it for our fans mm -hmm. uh, and not, you know, any personal, you know, glory or anything like that. Uh, you know, Bob still plays quite a few Husker songs in a set uh, and fans want to hear it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we will be playing Husker songs in our set. And again, fans want to hear it. Um, I had an opportunity to jump up on stage with the Posies a, a few years ago, and we did five Husker songs, and the crowd went absolutely bananas. Yeah. Uh, there were people weeping in the audience because they they hadn't, you know, heard these songs uh, played live. Um, so you know, it, it's it's something that that if it ever did happen, it would be for the fans. Yeah. Can you look back on that time now uh, just fondly? Uh, has time sort of erased all of the the bad parts of it for you? Well, I definitely look back on it fondly. Uh, you know, there 
the uh, the good times far outweigh the bad times. Right. Uh, and yeah, it's it, you know it it the way it ended was ugly. You know, it was kind of an ugly divorce. Right. Uh, but you know, time time heals and and you move on and and you can't dwell on on you know what could have been or, or should have been. So you know, you have to you have to live for yourself and keep yourself happy. Exactly. Hey, I know you don't have the restaurant anymore, um, but are you still cooking or are there some other projects you've got on the go? I, well, I, I, uh, I love to cook and I, so I, but I cook for myself, you know, uh, or friends or, or family or whatever. So in a way, getting out of the, out of the restaurant business made cooking more enjoyable mm. again. Uh, I don't miss, uh, being in that industry it, it's it's a, a tough environment uh, you know physically mentally and economically uh, the only the only thing i truly miss from my restaurant days are the you know uh, the relationships that you have with your coworkers, the relationships that you have with your with your regulars um, yeah i made a lot of friends what about when you're on the road? I mean, are you are you uh, a picky eater when you're on the road, or are you are you walking around or with a, with a, with a hot plate and and doing your own cooking, or are you just eating McDonald's <laughs> like everybody else is? Uh, I, yeah, I'm not a picky eater, and uh, you know, I I've learned a long time ago where to where to set my expectations as far as like walking into a place, <laughs> uh, and and so, you know, if if you know when to set your expectations pretty low, you're not going to be disappointed. <laughs> uh, it's not like we're going to be hitting up all these, you know, fine dining establishments on the road. And hopefully the food provided when uh, you have catered meals will be better than just pizza. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll sneak out for, for a good meal here and there. And are you still golfing? Uh, you know, I haven't really swung the clubs in, in, in a few years. Uh, maybe, maybe this summer I'll have uh, more time after the, after the tour to get out and actually hit the links. So yeah, we'll All see. Right. And, and, and I have to say, I am so glad to see that you still have what I have always considered the finest mustache in <laughs> rock and roll. Why? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> when was the last uh, time you were clean shaven? <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> I shaved it off uh, a couple years after Husker uh, broke up, and I think I went a summer being clean shaven, and, and I just didn't like it, so I grew it back. Well, you should always have it. <laughs> all right, my friend. Have we talked about everything we needed to uh, to get into about the new album and the tour and and all that? Uh, yeah, uh, we covered all things Ultra Bomb, and um, uh, oh, so. Uh, is talking about merchandise. We are uh, working with a company called Rockabilia. So rockabilia.com. Uh, they'll be setting up a web store for Ultra Bomb. And uh, we already have a web store for Husker Du. Uh, so if you go to rockabilia.com, right on the front page, there's a banner for to get the new Husker Du t-shirt for uh, tonight, Longhorn. And... Um, uh, the uh, Ultra Bomb web store should be up soon too. Perfect. All right, my friend. Well, listen. Thanks so much for your time today, and thanks for an amazing album. And I really look forward to you guys kind of sneaking up here to Canada and giving us a taste. Well, of you know, you're you're my neighbor to the north, so I, exactly. I, I got to come visit my neighbors. I hope so. It can't be soon enough for me. All right, my friend. See you somewhere yep. down the road. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>